hi welcome back in this video tutorial i'll show you how to make your own file encryption utility <coughs> based upon the rc4 encryption algorithm please download rc4.c and rc4.h before proceeding so first let's try and compile the rc4.c file give it an output call it encrypt compiles fine let's just run this program first and see what happens let's give it an input file the c file and an output file should contain the encrypted output and then a key let's keep it at a b c d e so now we actually see that something happened here and you know byte key stream encrypted byte so the file seems to have been encrypted and now in the same directory we see an out file right and that was what we gave in the command line argument let's do a lesson out find it's an binary file and as we can see it's totally unreadable right and you can't even compare it with rc4.c let's do a diff between both and we'll actually see that binary files rc4 and both of them differ and not just in a single place but almost all together so as we've seen that we have actually encrypted rc4.c into out using rc4 algorithm and the key a b c d e right let's look at the program now let's quickly look at rc4.h this is identical to the rc4.h file which we saw in the simulation program in the last video apart from the fact that now we use 256 bytes as the array length we have the same swap function the same init rc4 to do si is equal to i same do ksa absolutely no change apart from the removal of printf and get chars and which actually is going to create the ksa scrambling and then finally the prg output get prg output what differs is the main file so we've included rc4.h here and then we go ahead and now let's see how this works so first of all what we do is we define file to encrypt as the file which we want to encrypt and the encrypted output file as the output file of the encryption then encryption key the corresponding key length and data byte key stream byte and encrypted byte would typically be used to encrypt individual bytes that is data underscore byte would be what we would read from the input file key stream underscore byte is what we would generate as the corresponding key stream using the prga and encrypted underscore byte would be the output of zoring data underscore byte and key stream underscore byte let's look at the program flow now first of all we open the file to encrypt and also the output file in which we want to store the encrypted output then we also take in the encryption key and calculate the corresponding key length if the encryption key length is greater than array underscore length then we basically say that the key size is too large rc4 is meant for key size lesser than 256 bytes now we go ahead and initialize the rc4 array in which we put si is equal to i then we feed in the encryption key and the key length to do ksa to scramble the array using the ksa algorithm now we start reading bytes from the file to encrypt which was rc4 dot c in the previous example and read one byte at a time you can see that the size to read is just one and we generate the key stream byte for every byte which we are reading from the file and then we go ahead and get the encrypted byte by zoring the data byte and the key stream byte which we just generated then we go ahead and print the byte the key stream byte and the encrypted byte on the screen that was what all that clutter was and then we finally write the encrypted output to the file let's comment out this after that we print that we are done and we exit close both the files now let's actually recompile this and you know get the clutter down remove the out file and just run this once again so now the output is much more cleaner and we actually see initializing the rc4 array starting ksa opening the files and done and we once again contain the same encrypted 
file out right now the question is the file has been encrypted comfortably so how to decrypt this file with the same key now the beauty as we remember with rc4 was it was a simple zor operation between a and b in which a was the plain text byte and b was the key stream also we remember that a is or b is or b yielded nothing but a which was the plain text so what this means is that given the same secret key what we can do is we can once again generate the same key string and if we zor the encrypted byte with that key stream we'll get back the original input text so rc4 would actually have the same program for both encryption and decryption just now the input file would change to the encrypted file and let's name the output file as plain and give the same key a b c d e so now encrypt would take in the encrypted file generate the same key stream which it did in the previous case because we are giving in the same secret key and zor this encrypted file bytes with the key stream to get back the plain text which it is going to store in plain let's run it, it says done and now we can see that plain has been generated also note that plain out and rc4 are all of the same size the reason being it is a byte by byte encryption stream cipher now let's look at what plain contains and as we can see this is identical to the rc4.c file which was encrypted and stored as out so we can even do a diff between plain and rc4.c and we'll see that the diff returns a zero that is both files are identical so now using the same program itself we could both encrypt as well as decrypt now just to show you the strength let's just change the key and make it e even now it says things done but the point is the encryption process is currently blind of whether the output of the encryption was right or not so now let's look at plain and what it contains okay let's sort of one second maybe i should have deleted plain i actually gave the same key that was the problem so let's change the key and make it a so now you see once again plain shows out to be a binary file why the simple reason being that the key we put in was incorrect the real key was a b c d e but now we are putting in a b c d a because of which the encryption process or the decryption process failed and we got an output entirely different from the original file so the beauty is that with rc4 is that all a person has to do is transfer the encrypted file and tell that other person a secret through some secure channel maybe you can call up the person and say hey this is the password to decrypt the file and just send him the encryption program and the encrypted output and nobody else can do anything in between because the password or the passphrase is not stored anywhere inside the encrypted file right another small thing is that what i have basically left out in this presentation to keep it simple is i have not added what is called a salt now if you look into the rc4 details what will happen as if i give the same encrypted key every time a b c d e then the output key stream generation would always be the same and there are some statistical attacks which are possible through which people can crack the key if they have enough samples of such files let's not get into the details but to combat this what we use is a salt and an easy way to use a salt is to prepend the secret with something extra now we give rc4.c and basically we give the output file as out let's keep the key as same a b c d e so now we'll actually see that the output file has been generated right let's remove plain for a minute which is of course the same size as the rc4 the only difference is now the key actually changed and we prepended the double x to it now what we can actually do is the secret still remains the same a b c d e but now we can basically add the double x to the output file name itself 
so that the sender can figure out what is happening. So we could do it like this. Call the output file as xx. Right? Now what this xx is, is something called salt. If you've read some basic cryptographic manuals, you see that salt is something which changes every time even though the secret is always the same. The secret is a, B, C, D, E and the salt is double X. But there has to be some mechanism by which the receiver of the encrypted file knows the salt as well. The easiest way in this case is to just put a hyphen and add the salt to the name of the file itself. Right? Now, when we decrypt it, the way it works is exactly the same given the input file name and then we call it plain hyphen xx. You will see that plain hyphen xx is the decrypted output. This is just to safeguard the our passphrase from password crackers. The way in which this is implemented in web for 802.11 networks is having something called an initialization vector which is nothing but the salt. Anyway, just to keep it simple, what we can say is that given a password, we can generate a key stream with RC4. And using that key stream, we can encrypt any file we want and send it out to the receiver. The receiver, if he knows the same passphrase or password, can generate an equivalent key stream through which he can decrypt this file. So I would request you to run a couple of simulations using these programs and try and change the keys various combinations and make sure you are comfortable with the whole encryption decryption process. This is a very important topic. You may not always need to know the internal details as to why a particular cryptographic process is extremely strong or you know the ways to break it but at the very least you should know how to implement it. This I would end this tutorial. Hope you had fun. Thank you.